2005 Ford F-150 Lariat pickup truck 4x4 and uh, it ended up going to the dump one night and I blew out the uh, overdrive and it would just go into neutral and wouldn't do anything so went and investigated it some on the internet and find out that this little clip that cost about five bucks is inside the transmission it breaks goes in and clogs the spool and keeps uh, the thing going into overdrive and just makes it basically go into neutral Now first I'd like to, uh, I'm going to clean off around the pan and uh, wire brush it, use uh, the rag and the air hose to uh, get all the dirt off from underneath the pan and everything because it, it is very important to keep things clean uh, while you're doing transmission work. You want to get all the dirt, don't want dirt falling into it. So uh, we're going to clean it up before we get started here. You've cleaned everything up, it's looking really clean and stuff. and. Uh, get the dirt dust and stuff because it is the bottom of a truck so you don't get anything in the transmission again be very clean because transmissions in the smallest particle can mess them up cause a lot of problem so anyways what you, I've gone in and cleaned everything and we're gonna go ahead and loosen up everything um, you could follow a pattern you know middle to the outside uh, but I recommend leaving like this bolt and the one on the other side not loosening them at all until you get ready to let it down and then let it loose on one side and it'll dump and dump into your pan a little better. A little more controlled than coming out all over it. So it's still going to come out all over it. But, uh, but anyways, uh, go ahead and crank them loose. Alright, we got all the bolts off except for a few of them. And what we did is leave this one on and preferably that one on. Uh, you can see that one you can leave it on too just to kind of give you an extra one but uh, when you go ahead get ready get your pan set and uh, take off each of the bolts again let one loose hold it up let one loose and uh, kind of see where it's at and then put it back in where it's just kind of loose and then let the others loose and that'll kind of work it down and it'll dump out there'll still be some in there things will fall out too or could um, the oil filter, some of the, some of the pieces of the transmission or whatever, filter, another screen can fall out. So just try to catch that, keep it upright, and walk it out of here, and uh, try not to make a mess, because it will make a mess. There's a lot of fluid in there. Okay, when, uh, after you drop the pan, you're going to see your, uh, filter here, and it's still going to be kind of runny and stuff, and you just pull down on it. And it's basically held in with that little o-ring and stuff you got the uh the pan down and all the the oils dripped out and all and i let it drip for a while just to uh so i wasn't so messy under here and what you want to do first when you come to start taking things apart is you've got to remove this electrical thing right here you've got a tab here tab here tab here and a tab here the connectors here this one's a little different you got to poke it in and pull it down these give a little hole in here, it's hard to see, but there's a little hole in there. You stick a probe in there, and then just take a screwdriver behind it and pop it out. And then these will pretty much pop out too. So it's not real hard to get to, but that'll allow you to get all this stuff out and uh, before you start getting the bolts out and uh, dropping this thing. But you've dropped the pan, and it's a gooky and ooky and really dripping, so you probably want to let it drip for a little while. But the things I would recommend doing is taking off this, which I'll show you. The, this bracket keep these bolts with the with their brackets take off this bolt which is a 10 millimeter bolt it's the only 10 millimeter bolt that's on this thing right here a 10 millimeter bolt only one and then this 8 millimeter back here which is a little tough to see but you pull that off pull this off pull that off and pull that off then you can start to work on the big bolts now what I recommend doing is leaving this bolt in this bolt in and it's a short one it's on the aluminum this bolt one down here in and then loosen everything else you don't need to do these only these ones that are like stand up like that or the only ones you need to loosen and you only really got two kind of bolts you got these bolts are long bolts and then these bolts and the aluminum and the silver are shorter bolts so just separate them by those two and you'll know, keep them together and you'll know where they, that they all go back. 
Next you remove the rooster comb. You come and you take that off and keep that together. Keep that together when you put it in your in your tubs. You want to remove this bracket right here. And what you do is, uh, if you can see it worth a darn, just pull it down. It's this little bracket. Uh, okay, what we do is you're going to take out, this is a 10 millimeter right here, that you're going to do. 10 millimeter. And then this is an 8 millimeter that you can take out. Take this out, this bolt out, this bolt out, pull that out, and then this pulls out. And keep these bolts together with this bracket so you kind of know where they go. Uh, and that way it's easier to put them back. Okay, you remove the little solenoid here, whatever, it just pops out. Alright, we've removed everything here. <clears throat> and in order to make this a little easier so it doesn't uh, make a big giant mess, the best thing to do is we left this bolt here, this bolt here, and this bolt here, under there, if you can see it, um, in. And what we'll do is we'll crack this bolt first, and then this bolt a little, and this bolt a little bit, and then on this bolt, what we'll do is we'll back this off until we all the way get it out and we put it back in so we'll kind of know what we're dealing with and the fluid will dump out controllably and then when you get done you can just back these out and back this this one out down here and uh, that will uh, allow you to lower the plate so and uh, we'll keep the mess down somewhat this is the problem that we have this ring right here is broken and one of those pieces have gone off in the pan and that's jamming the uh, spool and keeping the overdrive from kicking in this is what the regular o-ring looks like but we're going to put this on jack that up hopefully get that ring out of there pretty easy and uh, and snap this new one in and that's the repair other than getting the part out that's a uh, lot that's clogging it all right we have the uh, bottle jack hooked up with a piece of PVC pipe we've got the ring here on the outside of this thing so we can push it and we've jacked it up so we got the uh, the ring and stuff exposed there holding it up and uh, I'm gonna do it off camera but I gotta get that ring out of there and still a good amount left which is uh, nothing really to grab it to pull it out of there so we're gonna have to work at it a bit to see if we can get out of there and get the new one in and once we do that we'll come back and show you what's going on we got the uh, snap ring replaced well that difficult to get out of there a little easier than I thought and I uh, got the new one in there and uh, so that part of the repair is completed now we need to go find the uh, pieces of metal that broke off and wherever they went and let's count for them all we're going to take off these bolts, these plates here, and the bolts to connect them. Uh, they're all 10 millimeters, and you got one extra one out over here to get off. So uh, we're going to take that off. You take them off in a crosswise pattern, and they go back on in a crosswise pattern. And don't forget about this one, too. It's one that's kind of out there by itself. All right, we got the bolts out, and they're all the same size. They're even the one on the side over here. So we just put them in a little tray all together here. And you just remove these plates, they'll stuck on with oil. And you don't really have to mark them or anything because they only go on one way. If you misalign the holes, they won't line up. They only line up one way, even if they're, well, you don't want to put it that way, but uh, you can only put it on one way. So just make sure you just remember that. You don't have to think about it. And uh, that one is the same way, it just goes on one way. And uh, you take that off, and you can take off the gasket, which should be. Fairly easy to come off there. Nasty old gasket. And then the plate. And we got the plate out of here, and there's a gasket attached onto that. Which we're just we found a little piece that's in there. If we can get it out of here. Right down in there. There it is. And let that little valve close and that's the little piece that's busted off and caused the problems we got it's only one of them I gotta kinda search around see maybe if I can find the other one it may be lurking in there somewhere and it may cause the same problem so we're gonna look around a bit and see if we can find that little booger 
All right, I'm a, I'm a happy camper here. Uh, I don't know where it came from. I found it on the side here. It must have popped out when I took it out. Uh, the other piece that was missing, and uh, I was looking for that sucker. I didn't want to leave it in there, and it caused the same problem again. So evidently found both of them, and the, those are the both the little pieces that caused, or one of those little pieces caused a problem. The other one was stuck somewhere. So anyways, now it's time to start to put this uh, baby back together again. So uh, anyways, we'll go through that procedure. Looking at our separator plate that is on the, uh, the lower body, uh, what we're looking at and is you want to look in this area over here, this little circle part, the little thing, there's a, I guess there was or something there. But if you see that little dot there, and I'm going to get in as close as I can here. You see that little dot there, and you can't really see it here too easy. I'll see if I can shift the light or whatever. There's little cracks around it, and that plate has failed or is going to fail soon. So uh, again, what we'll do is get another plate. Probably a good idea, really, with a, something with this many miles to uh, go ahead and get it, you know, replace it all anyways, since you're in there. So anyways, uh, extra money, about 26 bucks for that plate. And I got the super heavy duty tough one, which you'll see in the next scene. I recommend that uh, if you're going to go ahead and tear into this transmission anyways, you might as well replace it, everything kind of in there new. So I'd recommend going ahead with the new, uh, with the new separator plate. Okay, we're going to uh, do up the gasket here. So it'll stick to the plate. Put some ATF fluid on it. And then rubbing it out from the from the inside to the outside. And we're going to do this for all the gaskets. We got it back together here. This bolt and these eight bolts all put back and ready to go back in. All right, we're going to slightly bend these little tabs back so we can just keep this piece a little bit stuck so it stays up inside when we put this back in. Okay, we put that back in there and then we put the screen in there. Back in there, you got to put some grease on the bottom, dielectric grease on the bottom of it, and then stick that up in there. And we're ready to put the lower body on. So we're going to put it on. We'll come back after we get it back on. Anyways, we've got it back up in. And uh, just one thing to make sure when you do take it in that you get this uh, little guy here in that slot and get it back in. And then I just did three reverse bolts to hold it back in here here and here to hold it back in yeah we got the Pia here she's helping and she's under standing orders to kill any rats that are in the garage and it's a good idea to put all these little things back in before you start putting all your bolts back in so you don't kind of miss them in so we put this thing back in here pop it in there all right, we put this back in and this back in and uh, put this 10 millimeter short bolt in here. Remember to tighten it in your when you torque it down and this 8 millimeter will go in here and it will get tightened when you torque it down too. But uh, put those back on before you put all the rest of these other bolts on. What you want to do is you want to take this uh, bracket here and it goes right through here and it goes on and then you take the bolt and put it in there. It's one of the longer bolts. You should keep it with it. Well, we got that. Uh, we put that bracket in. There's the bolt. We just snugged it up because we'll torque it later. Now you've got uh, one more thing installed, and that's your little rooster comb here. What that does is it goes in here, and that little roller goes down. So just make sure you don't get that wrong, and then screw that baby in like that. You're gonna put in the bolts, all the bolts back in. And there's basically two bolts. You got these are your there it is. These are your short ones, and uh, they go basically anywhere there's silver, anywhere there's the metal, that's uh, the the aluminum or whatever. That's where they go. And then you've got just gonna put hand tighten that one in. And then you've got the longer bolts, which are longer, and those go on the plate anywhere anything's gray and then also you can kind of tell where they've been 
by the markings. You can see each one kind of got a mark. These other holes don't have a mark. So you can see that's where they'll go back uh, when they go back in. So you got long bolts and short bolts. And uh, you just stick them back all back in and then we'll torque them down to the pattern. We'll show you the pattern. And these are 92 inch pounds, and then these are 120 inch pounds when you do those. But uh, what we're going to do is torque this down now. All right, we got the electrical connectors, and what you do is just plug those back in like you unplugged them off. That's the hole for the filter. You just go ahead and take a new filter and put it in there, and insert it, press it on up, and that'll hold in until you get the pan in. And it just sits in the bottom of the pan. There's really only one way to put this thing on. It'll only go on one way. If you do flip it over backwards, the holes in the will not fit. So see how they don't line up. So you can't really put it on wrong. You really don't need to put anything on it. It's a metal gasket with rubber on it, so it's reusable. No sealant, anything like that. And basically what I'm going to do is you're going to use the bolts here. I have, I think there's 14 of them. And I'm going to put a couple of them on first, and then you start and do your torque pattern from the outside crossed, moving inwards. But I'm going to hold it on place first with those two. It's just easier to get it on. But then you go one, two, three, and then work your way in. And it's 120 uh, inch pounds is what it takes. All right, we're going to torque the pan down. We got it all hooked up and all the bolts in and snug. And the way you do this, you torque it to 120 inch pounds. And uh, we got a handy torque wrench here to do that. And you go through and you start on the outside and work on each corner. And then work your way in. And tighten them all to she pops and then go back and check them all again. And eh, pretty, pretty, be pretty well ready and ready to put fluid in this baby. All right, we put five quarts of uh, tranny fluid, the Mercon in it, and it's showing full on the dipstick. And so we're gonna come in here and fire this baby up. We got it fired up. Anyways, we'll see if we got any leaks. Me, I warmed up and running and we're just checking for leaks and don't see any so far. We're going to let it get warmed up and then we'll check the oil level again. It's shifted through the gears, forward and reversed, and uh, all the other gears it went into. So we're going to go out and I guess we'll take it for a test drive here. Alright, all right, what this thing was doing was uh, drift shifted normal, but when we went through into overdrive, it would kick into neutral. And that was from that little clip blocking that. So hopefully we got everything back together right. And we got the little clip right. And uh, everything's in, seems to be working good. I hadn't seen any leaks, so that's a good thing. So we're gonna get out here in the road and see if we get overdrive. All right, here it goes. Shifting into overdrive. Hmm. And it's in overdrive. So now she's in overdrive. So I think we fixed this problem. Seems to be driving pretty good. So seems to be driving nice so anyways hey uh, thanks for watching the video and uh, if you got any comments let me know whatever and uh, I just wanted to put this out there because I figure other people have the problems too so again thanks for watching and give me a like if you like it thanks bye